This is going to be called a soldier with nothing to lose is dangerous. 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The moment you believe the gospel, you became a member of the Lord's army. Now, you may not be in the fight. Maybe you're sitting on the sidelines, but you are still a soldier. You are still a member. Something about a soldier is that he can never lose his salvation. He can't lose his spot in the family of God. A soldier with nothing to lose is dangerous. And as a Bible believer, you already know you can't lose your salvation. And if you're in the fight like a soldier, then you aren't going to lose your testimony. So as long as you're in the fight and you're living like a Christian ought to live, you don't even have to worry about losing your testimony. It isn't hard to become a soldier in this war, but it's hard to stay a soldier with nothing to lose. If you're a soldier with nothing to lose, then you're going to fight with gritted teeth, not caring if you lose a limb, not caring if the whole world is against you. And these things are easier said than done. In Matthew 10, 39, it says, He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. If you go ahead and lose your life, then you're going to be further down the road in becoming a soldier with nothing to lose. And I don't mean quit your job, leave your family, and just become a wonder. I mean putting Jesus Christ first in your life. Lose your life having every decision being made with him as the number one priority. I mean, having your life in a position where that what you do is Christ-like from morning to night. Most Christians don't live that way because it's very hard. Go ahead and lose your life now, and you'll be much closer to having nothing to lose. You already can't lose your salvation. And if you're living for the Lord, you can't lose your testimony. So go ahead and lose your life. Matthew sixteen twenty five and 26 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Many men trade in anything to do with Jesus Christ for a paycheck. They are for sale. They stand on the broad way to hell with a for sale sign. And then they get in the car with the first devil that pulls up. If your whole world is made up of sinful activities and practices, then you're going to have a lot to lose. So when I say lose your life, go ahead and turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lose your life for him. That doesn't mean quitting everything in your life. It just means putting everything in God's hands and everything that you do needs to be done after you acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. The rich young ruler was so engobbed in his stuff that that stuff meant more to him than the Lord Jesus Christ. He hadn't lost his life. In Luke eighteen twenty two, it says, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. There is nothing wrong with having stuff. But if something was to happen to your stuff, then it shouldn't feel like you lost your whole world. My house could burn down tonight, and I feel for people who have experienced that. But my mindset, our mindset shouldn't be, I just lost everything if that happens. Your mindset should be, I may have lost my house, but I still have the Lord Jesus Christ. I still have the word in my heart. If that is your attitude, then you're closer to having nothing to lose than the rich young ruler. All you would have lost is in that fire is what you were going to lose anyway. In Luke 9.25 it says, For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? In John 12.25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. The more you care about material things down here, the less you'll have up there. You can lose eternal rewards down here, but not if you're consistently operating on the front lines of the spiritual battle. 
So don't worry about losing your salvation because you can't. And if you're always in the battle, you can't lose rewards or your testimony. So you can be a soldier with nothing to lose, and you're dangerous in the fight. In 2 John 1, 8, it says, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Like I said, you're not going to have to worry about losing rewards if you stay in the fight. If you stay in the fight, then you have nothing to lose. You're dangerous to the world. They will make laws just to get you stopped and to shut you up. In Acts 20, 24, Paul said, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. When you're like Paul, you're not worried about preserving your physical life. That is not the priority anymore. I mean, we all want to live. We all want to keep living and being in this fight. But the main priority is not about preserving the physical life. And if when that stops being your main priority, then you are a soldier with nothing to lose. We all want to live, but there should be something in you that would die for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've never been in this situation. But I hope that if someone was going to shoot me, I wouldn't want to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be so concerned with preserving my physical life that I have to deny Jesus Christ to just continue living this physical life. Because what are we living for? Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul was ready to go. He says in Philippians 1, 23, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. He said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. When you're living like you have nothing to lose, then you know the things of this world are light afflictions. They're light afflictions. You also know that they are but for a moment, as he said. It's, going, it's not going to last forever. If you go into battle knowing this, that it's not going to last forever, then you're going to be a soldier with nothing to lose. And if you go into the fight knowing that when it comes to eternity, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose, then you're going to be a soldier with nothing to lose. Second Corinthians 4.18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You're looking past this physical reality that you're in the bible prophesied to you your future where you're getting a new body you're getting a home in heaven and you're going to be a soldier with nothing to lose and your focus is on the things that are not seen in second corinthians 5 1 through 3 it says for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. All you got to lose on this physical world, if you're living for the Lord, is a body of flesh. You're looking for a glorified body. You're looking for a new home. We're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for our vile body to be fashioned like unto his glorified body, his glorious body. And we don't know what we shall be. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. The, the dead's going to be raised up incorruptible. We're going to become immortal. And that, staying on your mind, can make you a soldier with nothing to lose. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Quit worrying so much about preserving the physical and focus on the eternal. Like I said, it's easier said than done. 
You're a soldier with nothing to lose. When God begins to matter more than your family. Now this is a tough one. In Matthew 10, 35 through 37, it says, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father more than me is, is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. God has to matter more to you than your family does. By that I mean you can't do wrong just because your family does it. You can't do wrong just because your family wants you to or to enable them. You can't just forsake God and, and the Bible and serving Him to please a family member. You're supposed to love your family, but God needs to be first, always. And this can be tough because today you can be a Christian in a family that hates God. At the same time, the devil will make you want to neglect your family. When you look at the other extreme of this, the devil will make you want to neglect your family by telling you that you need to go out and serve God. You probably never heard that before. But he will say, you don't have time for the kids. You need to be out witnessing. You don't have time for your wife. You need to be doing more studying. You don't have time to have family time. You need to be praying. You need to go to your prayer closet and pray. And if you just neglect any time with your family, this is also wrong. That's not loving God more than your family because if you are a man, you're the head of the house, God wants you to train up a child in the way he should go. God wants you to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. God wants the woman to be there for her, her children and her husband. It's not loving God more than your family if you neglect your family because you're disobeying God by doing that. What you do with your family is a ministry itself. And I have my opinion on this, and I don't ever, but I don't ever really hear people say what I'm about to say, but I don't think you should just run off and leave your family for long periods of time, even if it is doing the Lord's work. I mean, when you got married and had kids, you signed up for that responsibility of having a wife and kids. I mean, if you wanted to go be a missionary in another country, then you should have took your family and took your your kids. Don't just leave them here. That's my opinion. What was the point of taking a wife and having children if you were just going to leave them behind? Who's going to lead them? Who's going to be the spiritual leader there? I mean, this is my opinion, but why would a person uh, get married and have children and then just leave them here and go off and preach all over the country or something? What about his first and main ministry, his family? He may be helping other people. He may be getting other people saved. But what about his family? If you are a man or a woman who can go without getting married, then you have an incredible advantage of being a soldier with nothing to lose. Paul had this advantage because he could go through his entire ministry. He didn't burn in his lust. He was able to go through his entire ministry without lusting after a woman. So he didn't, ha he didn't have to take a wife. And if that is you, then you are a blessed person. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7.32, But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. If you're not married and you don't have kids, this is also a blessing. You may think, well, I'm, uh, I'm a loser or something. I don't even have a wife or kids. Look at all these people around me. And I got a wife and kids. And many people, this world will make you think that if you don't have that, then, you know, you're, you're missing something. But if you can abide that way, if you can be a Christian that doesn't need a spouse, then you have a huge advantage. You have much less to concern yourself with on this world. You have a lot less to feel like you could lose. Because 1 Corinthians 7.33 says, But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. When a man takes a wife, he signed up for the responsibility of having a wife. You can't just go study all night and forget about her. You can't just go leave her to go do something else. 
If you're going to do that, then you need to marry someone who will do all that with you. But the man who's not married, he has all the time in the world to serve God. He doesn't have to worry about pleasing the wife. He doesn't have to worry about doing all the duties that come along with being a husband and a father. In 1 Corinthians 7, 34 through 35, it says, There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that, care, that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. In this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. A soldier who is single can live for the Lord without distraction. That is, if he isn't burning in lust all the time. I've never met anyone who was like Paul and had that gift where you didn't have to get married and you, you didn't burn in your lust. I never met a person like that. But if you have that gift, then you should use it. These pastors that are getting arrested for continuing to have their church services, even though the government says that they can't have them. I've seen a picture of the kids crying as the cops took the pastor away in the police car, and that's heartbreaking. But Paul didn't have that to even begin to worry about. All he had was the clothes on his back anyway. He didn't have anything to lose. If they put him in the back of the cop car and took him off, he's going to be like, oh, well, what are you taking me away from? I believe it is God's purpose for most people to get married. I believe Paul had a gift. He could go on a spiritual suicide mission every day. It didn't matter to him. Even if you are married with kids, though, you need to try your best to get them saved. And if things hit the fan then you know as soon as they are martyred or off somewhere that you can't reach them, as soon as they close their eyes in death, they will be with the Savior and you'll see them again. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, he describes the rapture about how the Lord's going to meet us in the air and that we're going to see our uh, loved ones again, that we're saved and we're going to see them again. And he says in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you are losing your family in the fight, you can be a soldier with nothing to lose when you realize that it's not over down here. Just because they die down here, you lose them down here. It's not over. If, you, if they're saved, you're going to see them again. And you can comfort yourself with these words. And if you can remember that you'll see your loved ones again and that death in this life doesn't mean you'll never see one another again, then you can be a soldier that doesn't have anything to lose. You can be a soldier with nothing to lose when you realize other people are just people. They are just flesh like you are. The people in high up positions are flesh like you. They're a sinner like you. They need a savior like you. They're going to die like you. There's nothing special about them, even though it seems like, I mean, I've, I've always had the problem. I, I'm always thinking somebody's better than me. I think that I'm very inferior to, the, to them, to that person. That's always been a problem of mine. And, I mean, I've, I've always felt like a big waste of space. But you shouldn't feel this way. According to the Bible, we're all equal. And we're all, we're all in need of a Savior. I had to get saved just like they need to get saved. In 1 Peter 1.24, it says, For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. All flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of grass. All these people that we think are just high up and mighty, they're nothing but flesh, and all flesh is as grass. There is no respect of persons with God. Every person is a sinner in need of a Savior. They aren't any better than you are. And if you realize that, what have you got to lose? Why try to impress anybody? Why even care about what they think? And these things are easier said than done. But reaching this state of mind will make you a soldier with nothing to lose. In Jeremiah 1, 6-8, it says, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Jeremiah says he can't even... He can't, he can't talk to people. He's, a, he's but a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. 
for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. You can be a soldier with nothing to lose when you quit being afraid of people because they're just people. I mean, they're nothing. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let God be true, but every man a liar. I'm just going to leave you with these thoughts on a soldier with nothing to lose is dangerous.